Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 93 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net uh, Apologies for my voice being a little hoarse this morning I'm, uh, I'm, I'm still trying to get over all the yelling I was doing when I was at the conference uh, just a little while ago, and we might as well address that right away because there's a whole bunch of emails. I'm going to read these out of order now, uh, at least today, because there was a lot of response letters to the conference situation. I'll explain that to you shortly uh, because if I read them without any context, you're going to be like, what the heck happened? So I go out to the conference. I'll give you the really, really short version. I went out to the conference on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday morning and uh, had spent a lot of time with people on Tuesday and then did the billboard event on Wednesday and spent time with a lot of the VIP people because we had the VIP dinner and pre-registration on Wednesday night. And the person who, uh, the mystery celebrity super whatever this person was supposed to be turned out to be somebody completely opposite because remember it was a complete secret. Uh, only the conference promoter Robbie Davidson knew who this person was and nobody else knew. And this person just, just kept dragging their feet. They, they didn't do any promotional video going up to it. Uh, they didn't do any, any social media attention at all. In fact, he, this, as of now, this person still hasn't posted anything on social media about what, what he's been doing, what he's been doing. And then they were supposed to, they said, okay, well, we're not going to do any of that, but we're definitely going to show up to the mixer on um, Wednesday night. And then they say we're going to be late and then they didn't show up at all. And then it was announced that this person is Logan Paul. And I was, and I'll, I'll respond to some of the, the emails also at piecemeal, but I was extremely upset that it was Logan Paul. Now, by that I mean, if Logan Paul would have showed up to, or sorry, shown up to the event just on his own, you know, on Thursday morning or Friday or whatever, that's fine. But we, he was being embraced as like this flat earth Messiah savior and and what are we talking about is is everyone forgotten what logan paul's done and i, I will do the real real quick version of this if you guys forgot you can look at the, the the news media articles from the beginning of this year 2018 where logan paul went to the japanese suicide forest flew over there from california to troll uh suicide victims and in the forest and that's exactly what he did and then he edited the video and posted it online and it offended an amazing amount of people not to mention oh i don't know the entire japanese culture i don't even know if he's allowed back in japan and he's done troll you know he's a professional troll that's what he does he gets paid a lot of money to troll people uh all around the world and situations and he he crossed the line and it was it was unbelievably offensive to me for various reasons, which I'll, I may or may not get into later. I've talked about in other things, uh, but suicide is a is not a joke for me in any way, shape, or form. It shouldn't be to anybody, but it really resonates with me a whole bunch. And uh, I was part of the reasons I did what I did was I want to make a statement. It's like, look, you guys should not forget what type of person this is. And we are definitely should not hitch our wagons to them. So instead of leading some sort of revolt, you know, which I wasn't going to do uh, or tell anybody on the way out because I didn't want to necessarily taint the atmosphere before going in, I just left. As soon as I, as soon as I couldn't even believe it for 12 hours, I, I once I got confirmation, I, um, uh, I just, I got out of there, got on a plane and, and flew back to Seattle and, and that's it. That's where I'm in, where I am now. So anyway, when I got back, of course, I'm going to catch flack from, from some people and other people, not so much, but let's read some of the emails that came in. We'll, we'll get the conference ones out of the way and then we'll, we'll get back and I'll jump back down to the emails because I try answering them in order. But if I don't answer these in order, or, or if I don't answer the conference ones now, it's, you know, six weeks from now when I'm doing, when I finally catch up to these emails, uh, it'll be like, wait, why are you talking about the conference? So in the conference, I, 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 there may be a smattering of some afterwards, but this is the, the bulk of them that came in. And uh, I think I've got a voicemail I can, I can play as well because there were a few of those. 
and live calls and chat stuff. Anyway, let's get to it. So this one's called uh, Kurt from Canada. Much respect. Hey, Mark, just caught your testimonial on Zulu One. Good on you. I could so relate. Accept the situation, change the situation, or get yourself the hell out of the situation. Many times I have simply disappeared or just not showed up when the situation called for it. And too many times when I encounter ignorance, the phrase... The people you meet when you don't have a gun <laughs> comes to mind. I'd never heard that, but that's awesome. Uh, cheers, Mark. Keep up the good work. I'll call in one of these days. And that's from Kurt. P.S. Cool rainbow over our place right now. Thank you, Kurt. That's much appreciated. And yeah, that was to, to chime in there real quick. That's exactly what I what I thought, which was, well, I, I can't change it. I'm not going to I'm not going to ask Robbie if it's him or me. Uh, and I, I'm not going to ask him to pull. I mean, this guy brought in a lot of people and he spent a lot of money on VIP tickets. Um, Robbie's not going to pull him out. I'm not going to put Robbie in that situation. So again, the, it was the, the, the less, the least amount of impact, uh, for me just doing what I did. Uh, this next one's from Sydney Silver, one of our Flat Earth cheerleaders. Uh, it's in a screenshot that uh, between her and uh, Flat Reality, uh, where he says, "You chased off Mark Sydney," and she goes, "Yes." And then a minute later, he's trying to avoid me because I knew he knew I had a sparkle hat for him to wear. He skipped town, uh, but he doesn't get away that easy. And that's from Sydney Silver. Thank you for sending that, Sydney. This one's called, and, and I'm going to try to, I'm gonna just try to jump through the ones between yesterday and today. Uh, this one's called uh, Vatican. Nope, nope, nope. That's not conference related. I'm only going to read the conference related ones first if I can. And no, not that one. Sorry. Uh, this one's called The Horrible Logan Paul. Mark, I had the exact same reaction of you. Of all the people it could have been, I had to laugh that it was the guy who I consider the biggest douchebag on the plane. The only reason I know of this person is because I have a nine-year-old son. For the record, my nine-year-old thinks he's a douchebag too. I have found, uh, I have a newfound respect for you uh, now. Thank you for sticking to your guns. Much love, Lindsay Roberts, otherwise known as Sparkly Fiend. Thank you for that. Much appreciated. And again, I didn't, up until this year, I didn't know who Logan was. I, I first heard of him because of the Suicide Forest. And then I had to go backwards and look at stuff and, and see where, you know, that he was tied to Jake, you know, Jake Paul's older brother, obviously. And, you know, a lot of YouTube followers. And basically he's another um, uh, television show knockoff uh, from, from the back of the day, the Jackass with Johnny Knoxville. This one's called, let's see, hang on one sec. Sorry, I'm having to filter through some of these. This one's called, Hey Mark, uh, you made a great choice. I 100% support your point of view on this whole situation. You did great. Enjoy your weekend. Happy holidays, Netta Hagler. Thank you, Netta. That's very much appreciated. If you guys don't know who Netta was, she was on the, um, uh, the CBS piece that was done with Patricia Steer and Mad Mike, and uh, she's the lovely woman in Los Angeles who did the epic Arcadia meetup, which started a huge chain reaction of things. So thank you for that, Netta. This one's from, well, it's called, oh, it's actually um, Behind the Curve Bellingham, but it's about the thing, about the conference. Hey, Mark, I hope you are well. <clears throat> I totally understand and respect your feelings on the surprise sprung on you on the FEIC. You have to keep your integrity, and I support that. I am glad I didn't go now, but was too busy anyway getting this home building project done. Hoping Robbie can turn it into a positive, but it definitely seems like a very risky invite, and he doesn't have the celebrity tag to most credible people either. I'd never heard of him before, just uh, but just praying it turns out okay rather than into a big joke. Uh, in a way, I think Flat Earth is gaining momentum, but you and others have already laid the groundwork. I'm actually really concerned about the climate engineering going on right now and the terrible system in California. So that has been my focus lately. Hope to see you soon. And that's from Dan Fosso, who I met up at the uh, film festival in Behind the Curve uh, in the documentary. And we he's been at other meetups and it's been a lot of fun. He actually lives on the north end of Whidbey Island sometimes, and it was really great. So thank you for that, and yeah, uh, very, uh, very positive. This one's called, 
second. Nope. Sorry. They have to filter through the ones from that don't have anything to do with the conference. I want to make sure I don't read anything. And of course, my email is slow. Uh, here's this one's called My Introduction. Hi, Mark. Hank here. I'm in Shoreline, Washington. I came across your content on YouTube. Thank you. You should have stayed. Brought it to your Savior in prayer, bearing all matters of the heart to him. Mark, uh, then open Genesis, starting reading out loud and listen for ways that you could use uh, that Logan Paul thing for his glory. Yahweh glory. I love you, man. Thanks again. Uh, and yeah, I, I actually thought about it a lot and asked for guidance that night. Uh, people think, oh, it was just this impulse. No, no, no. I literally sat in bed for 12 hours just staring at the freaking ceiling and just wondering what, uh, what to do about this because uh, I'm, I've always considered myself a, a man of conviction and integrity and I always will stick to my guns. Uh, what's the old saying? Uh, Let justice be done though the heavens fall. Uh, and that is, yeah, I, I'm going to upset some people doing this which is fine, but there is, you know, be true to yourself. And I, I'm, I'm never, ever going to be a hypocrite in, in that regards. And that means, um, and some people say, well, it's stubborn. No, it's, it's conviction. It's not stubborn. It is, uh, it's what you believe in. Can you make your decision and still sleep at night? Will you have any regrets? Uh, yeah, do, of course I had regrets, but think of the stuff I gave up. I gave up all the interviews that were, that I was going to do. Uh, I gave up the wonderful award show that I was going to do with, with Patricia. Um, I, I worked really hard on my speech. I did a lot of stuff that, that preparing for this thing. You know, I brought all sorts of, of swag for people. I gave out as many gifts as I could uh, before the conference. And then I left the rest there with people to divvy up the way they say, saw fit. Um, I was looking forward to meeting so many more people than I did than just the VIP. And I had to give all that up. So it was not an easy decision to do. You know, if you think I'm, I'm in it for fame and glory, I'm absolutely not. In fact, it was a line in my speech, which is, uh, I don't want to be famous. I want to be right. And there's lots of famous people who are wrong, but, uh, and, and lies eventually end, but the truth is forever. And that was really the, the ending lines of my speech. And I was so looking forward to delivering that. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to deliver that to uh, a guy that we're being forced to embrace that I think represents some of the, some of the worst traits of, of our country. Uh, we built this guy, uh, Logan Paul and his brother, Jake, and uh, you look at their body of work and it's like, wow, this, this, this is what America has built. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. All right. Let's see what else we can go to. Let's go to one sec. Um, sorry, I'm just, I get so many emails. I have to filter, filter through. This one's called, you don't cease to amaze me. Hello, Mark. The weirdest thing happened to me. So I went to bed Thursday night and I had a dream that I was attending the conference and I was so excited because I was able to see all my favorite flat earthers. And of course you being one of my top ones, you were nowhere to be found. So in the morning I was thinking about the dream I had and thought it was uh, odd that I didn't see you in the conference. So today, Friday, I get an email about a new video upload, the title flat earth conference, Denver, Logan Paul, and why Mark Sargent left my jaw literally dropped. And I'm not kidding. After listening to the video, I totally agree. And I'm on your side. You definitely did the right decision. And honestly, I think it takes guts to do what you did. And I definitely support you for that. You stayed true to your character. I was so hyped about the A <laughs> the A lister talk about disappointed. Uh, never expected that. I forgive Robbie though, like he said, he probably looked at the sus subscription numbers, but if he was wise enough, he should have told you who it was. And I truly think things uh, would have been different regarding the announcement. Anyhow, uh, stuff happens. All we can do is just move on. And that's from Costa. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was, I was thinking, I was talking about that with somebody this morning and uh, peanut gallery, as a matter of fact. And this, most of this could have been remedied, although I still would have been extremely upset and still probably would have left. Um, but it was, it was the hype more than anything that, that, that made, that generated the, the, the overstating of this. All Robbie had to say was instead of a, a some with millions of followers or millions of fans, and he said millions of fans is say, look, he's a really big internet celebrity. 
that's it. That's all you have to do. And you're saying, okay, why? Why does he have to specify that? That, that way the secret is still kept. Again, I still would have been pissed off to, to no end. But uh, I still probably would have left. But again, this thing never should have been kept a secret. But if you want to keep the secret, that's what you do. Which you say, it's an internet celebrity. Why? Because it keeps everybody in that arena. Nobody would jump outside of that and say, oh, it's a television star. It's a movie star. It's a rock star. Or a hybrid of all these things. It was allowed to grow and morph. The, the rumor mill just morphed and morphed and morphed. And Robbie could have could have killed it or, or taken it back in, in in two seconds. All he had to do say, look, it's an internet celebrity. That's all the hint I'm going to give you. And he did not do this. So he's going to be paying the price for a while because it is okay. Well, one, he'll never be able, ever be able to do that again. Uh, any any celebrity that calls him, he'll be able to. He'll just have to say, "Sorry, you know, I I'm going to run it by a few people. We will we'll do my best to not let it get out into the media." But in this case, uh, Logan Paul again, you could have called all sorts of people in the media and be, be like, "Who the heck is that guy?" Because he doesn't exist outside of the internet. He's not in movies and television uh, and music and all this. He is he's strictly internet based, and uh, he, so. Yeah, that's all. That's all that had to happen there to uh, to get rid of that. Uh, this one is called "I Commend You." Nice, Mark. I just heard your chat about why you left. Had I known that piece of uh, crap <laughs> was the one, I would have. I would not have gone to the conference, even if the van had made it. And you guys will probably figure out who this is. The three thousand I spent to make sure it had a good transmission did not pay off. Found out the day I was leaving, it would not shift right, so I had to cancel. And was so bummed. Uh, I was so looking forward to seeing you more than anyone. I hope Robbie learned a lesson. Uh, no more secrets. Uh, and I won't read the second part because it's about money. Uh, when I despise someone, there's no way I can act like I'm friendly to them. Yep, I absolutely. I have a lot of respect for you and your judgment of character. Glad you stuck to your guns. All the best, Chris Pontius. Thank you, Chris. It was it was much appreciated, and uh, I would I was I was hoping you'd be there too. But again, maybe everything for a reason. Um, I, I am one of those people that never. I, I'm sorry, I can't. And you've heard me say this and other things. I can't pretend to be something else. I I I have no poker face whatsoever. Um, I believe what I believe, and uh, I'm not I'm not gonna smile and be nice to somebody if I just loathe them. And that's what I, I, I was being forced to do that, you know, not by my choice. And it was just sprung on me. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like of all the people, that's the guy. And, and of course, you know, me more than, than most, Every, there was most of the people in the, in the conference didn't even know who he was. And that should give you an idea of, of how, how off the expectations were. But in my case, I was one of the few uh, that there was even um, that was speaking that was part of the staff that did that knew. I, I knew who he was, and I knew very well who he was, and, and everything he had done, and and how he's trying to get back, you know, into good graces with social media. I'm sorry, in my opinion, what you did was a life sentence, and that is you can't backpedal from that because what you did was you you didn't the apology he gave was boilerplate it was given to him by a publicist i know that full well he doesn't have the intellectual capacity to write even some of the words some of the verbiage that was used in that apology uh you want to apologize for making fun of suicide victims uh you should go the step further you i don't know how about um uh spending time uh, on a suicide crisis hotline you know do some phone time uh, do you do that no um, how about doing a public service announcement for, uh, the, some of the traits and depression, you know, something free that you can, you can put on, on, on public television. Do you do that? No. Um, how about uh, going on a, um, I don't know, offering yourself to, to, to any talk show and anybody, I don't care if it's Dr. Phil and, and talk about, uh, what mood stabilizers may help people that suffer from, uh, extreme depression, any of these things would have helped your case a whole bunch and he did the absolute bare minimum and he did it because his brand was in danger that's all he did he's like oh i'm sorry i really didn't mean it you know blah 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 it's like i don't know don't 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 apologize to us apologize to the japanese people the people that take uh, honorable death very seriously uh, i don't how, how many other uh, cultures do you know that um that have people like kamikaze pilots huh oh god Sorry, the guy rubs me so, such the wrong way. 
and he did nothing to uh, is, if he would have done any of those things to try to remedy no he just stayed underground and and tried to let it blow over and yeah it, a lot of people had forgotten about it and i'm the guy that had to come forward uh, and kind of explain it like this um if there's anyone that knows anybody in the judicial system that's part of the um anyone that's been in jail you have people that have life sentences and when they but every once in a while they come up for a parole like every 10 years you get to put up for a parole and when these people usually mass murderers or something like that uh, come up for a parole you will have fam family members come to the parole hearing and they will read the letter it's like okay pa parole board you know just in case you forgot who this guy is sitting in front of you that's that's dressed up and and looks more polished and looks relatively calm let me tell you what he did that's really what my role was here, which was like, it, it, this, this topic resonates with me so much. And I was the one that had to come forward. And fine, if I'm the bad guy in some areas and some people's, oh, you're just whining. No, 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 no. No, if I'm whining, fine. Please tell me how um, people that fall victim to suicide is a uh, something you can laugh at in any capacity. Joke about in any capacity. Uh, sorry. So I have to remind people of that. That so you don't you don't get a pass. You don't just because you've people forgotten doesn't mean you can you can walk your way into our circles, and and be embraced even though he's on stage for two minutes. He absolutely has no idea what he's talking about. Listen to him talk for two minutes. Find any depth in there at all. He doesn't even understand understand the concept. He's just regurgitating words that just terms he, he could he was having a hard time even putting sentences together <laughs> and, and saying oh well you know i want to know about more about it because before i put my brand my name on it attach my name to it my brand because we we are we have to be worthy of that yeah whatever uh, i got a couple more and then we'll just jump right into the other stuff uh this one's called right move mark hey mark i converted my ticket to live stream wow what a drama show glad i'm not there I am listening to your interview and you make a lot of sense. I hear what you're saying and it's clear you made the right decision for you, uh, which from here forward may open new dialogue or possibly split everyone up. Why did Robbie not tell you and Patricia who this was? This makes no sense. I have never heard of him. You did a great job expressing your thoughts about it and why you left. I think many people will agree with you and your decision as I am seeing your point and you have my support in leaving. Um, Julie Williams. Thank you, Julie. And it's... Um, it's great to, to have that support. And yeah, I'm not backing down from this. Not even not even remotely close. I do not care who comes at me and says that I, I damaged this. And it could have been much, much worse. And by that, I mean, hang on, there's one more. Did I? Um, okay, I think that was the last one. And then I will play a little voicemail thing here in just a second. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm not going to back down from this at all because... Uh, it was, in my opinion, the statement I had to make. Not everybody else's, and nobody else wants to endorse me. Hey, fine, that's fine. You can you can do whatever you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm all. You can only be true to yourself, and that is what I try to do. So let let the haters hate if if they want to come at me. And uh, but you were never going to change my mind on this ever ever suicide is not a joking matter uh i too have dealt with issues of depression over my life for various reasons you probably think oh he's such a happy guy nah. when you have uh, enough enough emotional depth and enough passion and enough conviction in things you will have some really low lows and some some really great highs but uh the lows can can take you to some dark places and um, I respect that, uh, you know, that I respect people's emotions in that regards. And I will never, ever, uh, even conceivably uh, make light of something like that. So with that, uh, let's play a quick voicemail so I can get that out of my system. And then we will uh, just jump right back into the rest, the, the back half of this. We'll just do regular emails. So one sec. Mark, I just heard you walked out of the convention, and when I found out why, I was impressed. That, that piece of garbage, how was that going to be great? Anyway, thanks for standing up for your principles, and just letting you know we're behind you. Talk to you soon, Joe Tremble. 
All right, this one is called Flatty Award Suggestion. Hey, Mark, Suzanne in South Korea here. I just finished listening to you and Patricia on the last Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I should probably be sending this to her, but you seem to check your email and messages more regularly. So, well, I don't know, this was back in September. Anyway, I don't know if you have this on the list, but I was thinking a good category for the award might be Best Flat Earth Compilation of Reference in Books, Media, and Movies Award. It's too wordy, I know, but you know what I mean. There have been a few really good compilations of the Flat Earth references in movies, television shows, novels, political speeches. Take a lot of time and find all those clips and put them all together. Not that I know from experience, but I would imagine. Just a thought. Keep up the great work and keep it flat. Suzanne B. in South Korea. Thank you, Suzanne. And yes, we did do a compilation uh, award thing, and the awards I, I heard went off very well last night, and um, that Rick Hummer was the uh, um, co-host with Patricia, which was wonderful. Great choice. This one's called Please Send 12 Slides. Thank you. That's from Sherry Garrett. You are very welcome for that. And yes, I did send the 12 slides. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark. If you want to see the Earth is flat, all you have to do is sail from west coast to somewhere in the east, and by sailing around the world, you discover the same thing that early explorers found, that the Earth is round. You don't need to do any rocket or balloon experiments, just sail around the world. And that's from Mike Linder. Very true. This one's called... Patricia told me to email you. Dear Mark, I still can't register on your website. I never received the conf confirming email. Meanwhile, my book, Flat Earth for Dummies 101, just went live on Amazon. The website is flatearthfordummies101.com. Looking forward to meeting you in Denver, Elaine. And yes, I absolutely did meet her. Uh, I met a lot of people. At the uh, There was a lot of people that came in early for registration on Wednesday. And so I shook hands and, and talked and with just about everybody I could there. I was hardly ever in my room on Tuesday and Wednesday. So I, it wasn't like I just showed up there and turned around. I, I met a whole bunch of people, went to the billboard event. A lot of fun. So And, and Elaine was one of those great people that I met. This one's called Wayne Mercer shared a photo with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Flat Earth license plate from California, Firmament. So if you guys don't know, the, the Flat Earth license plate compilations, there's still tons and tons that uh, need to be done. This one is California, and the seven letters that were chosen are F-R-M-A-M-N-T. So Firmament. That's awesome. Great biblical Flat Earth reference. That's from Lane Mercer. This one's called Concerned with My Flat Earth Friends. Dear Mark, my name's Matt, a.k.a. Flat Earth Sage on YouTube. I was browsing through some videos on YouTube earlier today and came across some videos on Flat Earth. Uh, Earth flat Earthers, or so they claim, talking about Australia not existing. Yeah. I was stunned hearing about this as I am a flat earther and my father is from Adelaide, Australia, but being a flat earther, I shook my head. I thought uh, it was just a silly internet rumor again, but I'm kind of blown and deeply concerned about my flat earth friends. Any thoughts on this subject? And that's from Flat Earth Sage. Yeah, <clears throat> the the whole Australia not existing thing. Come on. Nobody believes that. It's like a couple people and they're just being weird. Uh, come on. Everybody knows Australia exists because for, I don't know, tons of reasons. Uh, where where do you take take your pick? I don't know. Just about every actor that's ever come from Australia, every television show that's been shooting in Australia, there's live feeds from Australia at all times. Uh, there's you can literally there's there's hundreds of webcams that are broadcasting 24 hours a day in every part of Australia. So no, and I I don't even have to use the. Um, uh, the, the satellite photos that the people would say, oh, of course, because I can't, because most of your high altitude photos would be doctored anyways. But but no, just all the ground footage, no. no not even 1% of flat earthers believe in that. There's a couple of people out there, fine, but the rest of them, pff, nothing. This one's called Admiral Bird Discovered the Flat Earth, etc. I think it's a little long and just a little long uh sorry it's from david f and uh, yeah well you know what i'm gonna read it you know what it means I'm, I'm looking through some of the paragraphs it means a lot to him so let's do it let's let's just read this thing hello m sergeant i just watched your admiral bird fe video on youtube and since you left your email address i felt compelled to reach out perhaps because i'm so lonely these days since i realized <clears throat> That instead of being a disinfo campaign, Flat Earth is the unimaginable but plain truth. 
I have a long and unexpected story of how I got to the point, but I won't bore you with it here. Suffice it to say that I have uh, woken up uh, just after the 2016 elections with WikiLeaks, Spirit Cooking, uh, Hollywood, Rothschilds, Illuminati, and Israel, only to realize very recently that my one awake friend here in Seattle now, now probably thinks I'm as crazy or as confused as even my Christian family probably does, since having told them I'm a flat earther. I don't need to tell you about how I arrived at Flat Earth since you probably came the same way through unraveling NASA deceptions, ridiculous science and science fiction, so many clues hidden in plain sight, and the historical record for Genesis. Uh, for my part, a lifetime of unapologetic sin, idol worship, paganism, occultism, and spinning through life without a compass came to a screeching halt the moment I watched that first Flat Earth video with an open mind and open heart. Suddenly, a godless man dedicated to a life of sin realized life is that simple. A creator and his creation, a god and his servants, an Eden specially constructed by the creator to support his faithful, his children, equipped with sun and moon, all for us to serve and please him. It still sounds absolutely crazy to me, though I can't deny it ringing true. So I fall to my knees and thank God for blessing me with eyes to see and ears to hear, and I begin a somewhat weary exploration into the Bible, a book I have gone out of my way to ignore all of my life. I had hoped this change of heart would bring me closer to my fundamentalist Christian family back home in Tacoma, but the truth is that since I have embraced truth, I have never felt more estranged from any of them. Even when I was a junkie on the street so many years ago, I'm afraid to tell even my mother that I have accepted God, accepted Christ, fallen to my knees and begged forgiveness because it will inevitably lead to how I arrived there. Through flat earth, I have already thrown out hints about my various truthful realizations and none of them have been well received. I'm pretty sure they all think I'm crazy as hell already without bringing flat earth into it. They say they're Christians, but... I have been to their crossless church with no call out to newcomers to come forward and accept Christ, and I'm not sure anymore, honestly. I know my dear mom has Jesus on her mind a lot, but she never really seems to ask the important questions, and if anyone does, they are quickly shamed. I will give her the benefit of the doubt still. I owe her this much, though it surely has me in a very unexpected position. So here I am, bud, wide awake, surrounded by people, but lonely as heck. A sinner come to Jesus trying to figure out how to listen to God, to my heart, and how to live going forward. Of course, this is all happening under constant bombardment of microwave radiation, chemtrails, and weaponized everything. While we've been enjoying our blatantly satan satanic media and, and petty comforts, the, force <clears throat> the forces of darkness have been working overtime to defy God once and for all the most inconceivably horrific and grotesque way imaginable by depopulating and utterly destroying his kingdom, his earth, his creation. The transhuman abominations occur faster and faster while continuing to tell us about Hubble and Mars and how small and insignificant we are in this little round rock. One of billions and billions, just like each of us, is just one in billions of billions. Nothing insignificant. I guess I'm a little depressed right now. I should be feeling the joy of the newfound relationship with my creator, but instead I'm feeling sad and defeated and alone as I feed my innermost thoughts to a total tr stranger whose name I don't even know and probably an NSA or Google AI supercomputer dedicated to my enslavement and destruction. Thanks for letting me get this off my chest. I've been longing to say these things, but I'm too isolated to find a recipient. I'm pretty sure you understand how I'm feeling. Thanks for the videos and keep up, 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 my friend. Your work is reaching people. They can censor and delete channels, but they can't stop all of them without scrubbing the whole platform. I mean, they're into a serpent eating itself and everything, but I don't think they're ready for a meal that big. Uh, a Trump or Harvey Weinstein here and there, maybe. All of YouTube, I doubt it, is still a sword that cuts both ways. Wield that sucker. God bless, sincerely, David F. Thank you, David. In fact, I'm, I'm glad I read that. And um, I, what I'll do in this case is I will write him a quick email and tell him that it's going to be in this... Um, that I read it on this show, which is great. This one's called Flat Plain Facts. <clears throat> Hi, Mark. Hello from New Zealand. I'd love a copy of the 12 slides that everyone keeps talking about. Please do send it across. Thank you, Anand. And I did. This one's called Someone Sent You Files. Hello, Mark. I've been intrigued by all the evidence and what Eric Dubay has been saying about all this. How does Flat Earth relate to Christianity and creation? I'm a devout Christian and I uh, have, have trouble with some of his beliefs, meaning Dubay's. Thanks, Bill Burke. And uh, yeah, Bill, 
that's why when I got to the later part of the clues, I had to make um, one of the clues called Hiding God, which really talked about how Flat Earth relates to religion and spirituality. And even, you know, something I, I say in, in interviews, which is um, we are... Uh, we are all amazing spiritual beings and that uh, if even if you fell away, flat earth will bring you back into it because one of the default positions of flat earth is that it was created. And if it was created, it was a creator, which means you're not alone. You are a very special individual and this place was built just for you. And you're not uh, this, this little tiny rock flying through the empty vastness of space. So keep that in mind. This one's called flat earth question. Howdy, Mark. I've just been following you for 18 months and been hooked on Flat Earth ever since. I finally decided to take a peek one board day after ignoring the ridiculous FE vids kept popping up in my suggested viewing list. Two questions. One, has anyone ever calculated the amount of neg negative Gs one should experience in an aircraft flying about around the globe at 500 miles an hour? I doubt one would experience weightlessness, but it should be quite noticeable. Mm, I know I haven't seen a video on that. Uh, two, several videos show the shadow cast by the Earth onto the moon during an eclipse as being upside down. The shadow is first appearing on the wrong edge of the moon and crossing in the wrong direction. Is it possible the dome is acting like a lens and casting an inverted image? Yeah, sure, possible. It's part of the, the hints uh, of, of, of how we're supposed to det detect this thing. Uh, love all you're doing, Mark. Keep up the great work. A Canadian flat earther just north of you outside Vancouver, British Columbia, named Douglas. Thank you, Douglas. Appreciate it. This one's called All Right, China. China Plate Mate, Flat Earth Jeez, uh, okay. 12 picks and five questions, please, Mark, but shut my closed minded <laughs> friends who claim to know everything about the globe but haven't left Britain before. Thanks, Mark. Danny, the Fat Flat Earther uh, YouTube channel, burn fat till my stomach is as flat as the earth. P.S. I've sent this three times using wrong email. <laughs> Keep it flat like my stomach will be just 4,365 sit-ups to go. You know, I do a whole bunch of sit-ups every week, and I've been doing them for years and years and years, and honestly, that isn't alone. If you want a six-pack, and six-packs are really, really tough, it's also a question of diet. Uh, the only six-pack I'm ever going to get is probably going to be in the refrigerator. This one's called Questions, Answers, Quandaries, and Cover-Ups, the Flat Earth Phenomena. Dear Mark, the reason for this email is because you invite inquiries from viewers to your introductory video. The reason for my viewing of the video was an attempt at trying to figure out the factors behind the sudden and very widespread increase in the belief of, or at least the inquiry into, the Flat Earth Hypothesis. Watching such videos and reading the comments posted throughout social media has led me to ask yet another question. Why are people so intent on both believing in and spreading the belief of that which they feel is the truth, especially with such uh, surety and... Um, uh, sincerity. This applies equally to both those who are questioning the standard paradigm and those who maintain their allegiance to said paradigm. Certainly one could make the point that a person's position on whether or not the earth is flat or round is of no consequence at all, and that the only real world value that may be gleaned from their personal viewpoint is perhaps the idea that we can evaluate the character and mindset of a person who either believes or disbelieves in something so widely accepted as true based upon their ability to critically analyze facts and information their general audience or sorry their general reliance upon conventional wisdom of the collective their grasp of social acceptability and ideological taboos and whether or uh, the inevitable social isolation which arises their form is a greater or lower or importance relative to the truth. If you have any insight into these questions, I would like to hear what you have to say. Thanks in advance uh, for your time, Paul. I, you know what? I was I'm I'm actually reading through this again, trying to find where the question marks are. Uh, I think it is why are people so intent on both believing in and spreading the belief of that which they feel the truth, especially with such why why are they so intent? Well, okay, I think I can answer this. It's because flat earth strikes them to their core. It's like a repressed memory because you are shown the globe at such a young age. You know, you sh you're shown it usually when you're in first grade and you carry it with you all the way through 12 years of, at least in the United States, 12 years of school and then whatever secondary school and university. Um, it's like finding out, I, I used to say that, that you're adopted. And that is, you don't, it doesn't matter to you and until the day you start believing it. And it's like, wait, 
I was adopted. And then every conversation you had with your parents going, it just echoes, it reverberates all the way back through time in your memory, all the way back to your earliest days. Like, wait, what are my first memories of my parents? Who did I hang out with? Was I in a foster home? You know, all these things uh, cross through your head and they, uh, they, they resonate so loudly that this is massive well of energy inside you, this massive uh, ball of enthusiasm, and it's got to go somewhere. There's nothing you can do. It, it has to go somewhere. Uh, same thing with me. I mean, when I made the clues, it was, uh, it was just this, all this energy. I had to get it out of my head. And you're compelled to talk about it in, and, or, or put it out there in some way, shape, or form. And whether it's talking to your friends or making videos or talking to your coworkers or, or family, um, that that's why it generates this, this reason why the conference even happened that, you know, the, if the, once the flat earth becomes believable, it it's, it's, it's literally world changing. And you are now, you're now seeing the world with new eyes. Uh, if any, uh, any doubt, look up the movie, uh, from the eighties called they live, which, uh, you know, once you see it, you can't not see it. You can't go back to the globe, which is why our retention rate is so high. It's over 99%. Because it's kind of like, again, why we say red pill, blue pill, kind of like the matrix. Once once you find out about the matrix, even if they plugged you back in, you wouldn't be acting the same because you know it's not real. Uh, once you realize that the, the globe is this just this illusion, this cartoon, you can't go back to it, even if you wanted to. So that's that's the big reason why. Moving on. This one's called Survival Guide, Coast to Coast, and 12 Slides. Hey, Mark, I'm one of the closet flat earthers you've often referred to until now. I was just outed by my pastor on Facebook. Oh, boy. He's one of the my oldest friends, and he knew I had been looking to, into this. He linked an article on my page from Higher Perspective discussing the idea of a reality show where flat earthers search to find the edge. Along with the typical condescension and ridicule was an opening video with a nonsensical explanation of how gravity would work on a flat plane. I uh, know I've seen it. Uh, anyways, I, when I didn't respond to the link, he posted a comment asking my thoughts. I told him too much for a mere moment to reply and we discuss, discuss it over beer sometime. As food for thought, I shared a link to your speech at the 2018 conference in Canada. Maybe I'll give you a call and fill you in after our beer summit. Keep up the flat-tastic work. Love you, man. JW. Yeah. Uh, P.S. Please send the survival guide coast to coast interviews in 12 slides. Thanks. Yeah, it was good. He put that in the title because had he put that at the bottom, he wouldn't have gotten until just now. Uh, but if you put uh, anything in the first couple lines or in the title uh, about getting the 12 slides or the five questions or the survival guide or anything else, I will send them to you immediately. This one's called a question, if I may. Dear Mark. I took this image on the 25th of August, 2018 with an iPhone. Would it be possible for you to take a look and offer me an explanation? I have a series of images all depicting mushroom-like happenings plus shockwaves. There is a flare due to the camera, but not all can be explained by that. I have also sent an image to various universities awaiting replies. This image raises uh, so many questions, but before I embark upon them, I would like to hear several explanations. Very best regards, Miss Woodward. Okay, and w w there's a reason why I'm not going to respond to this because rookie mistake, and we all do it. Let's face it. Um, I, normally, I'd say I hate to see it, but look, we all do it. Even now, I, decades later, everyone, every year, I guarantee, still sends emails without sending the attachment because we think about sending the attachment. What you really should do is like, attach it just, I mean, immediately once you start uh, doing the email. This one's called Hello from Portugal. Uh, this one may be a little long. Yep. Sorry, this one's a little long. But thank you uh, from, for the guy from Portugal. This one's called Prepper Guide PDF. Mark, please send me a copy of these guide. That's from Domingo. Yep, I sent him the Prepper's Guide. If you don't know what that is, it's called Empty Shelves. It's a little prepper guide that helps you in the event of a power outage. Doesn't add, doesn't endorse anything. Doesn't want you to buy anything. Well, I mean, you can buy whatever you want. I'm just not going to name it by brand. I mean, if I say buy bottled water, I'm not going to endorse Dasani bottled water uh, or Aquafina or any of the others. Um, just get. But anyway, it's a free guide. It's called Empty Shelves, and if you want, it's a couple mags. I can shoot it through the email, and it's about 100 pages long. I highly encourage you to print it out. Uh, this one's called Earth Two. 
Uh, Mark, here's another one. Regards Jerry Christian, and it's an article from harikrishna.com slash sun editorials. All right, I'll check that out when I get a chance. This one's called Flat Earth Help. Hi, Mark. I've watched most of your videos and I believe the in the flat earth, but I have a friend from church told me to look at this page. I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I'm also not dumb. I don't understand scientific. I know the flat earth isn't a mirage, but I would like to have something to say to the person who asked me to look into this. And I know that you are much more experienced than myself in the flat earth. I would really appreciate any feedback. I have my concerns about this. Alfred Fila mentioned in this and I Googled him. I'd like to thank you in advance. Look forward to hearing from you. And it's, uh, the, the article is answersingenesis.org, astronomy, earth flat proof, just a mirage. Uh, yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll take a look at it when I get a chance. This one's called Venus Anomaly, okay to use on air. Hey, that's awesome. Mark, I am one of the silent fans who loves your work. Thanks for all you do and what you do. We are a thousand strong. We looked to you because you were doing what we can't. We are behind you all the way. Your opening speech at the Canadian conference set chills up my spine. You are a great speaker and very easy to listen to. The reason I am writing is to see what you do, what you have to say about this. I've sent the same message inquiry to the guys at the Globuster show after Morgyle had a dispute with a globe head about the practicality of Venus's visibility potential at 11 p.m. While I'm not convinced either way on the dispute, I do feel Morgyle would have landed a right hook if he would have been asked about the Venus anomaly. The anomaly I'm about to describe is just another topic in the preponderance of evidence against heliocentrism that I did not hear enough about. This is just another mainstream tale that states Venus retrogrades um, rotation, otherwise known as spinning backwards, in the orbit around the sun perfectly timed conveniently that it shows the same face to Earth at all times. Venus shows the same face to Earth at all times, even though it's orbiting and rotating around the sun independently entirely of the Earth. How can this be? How can this happen? Yeah, that's an excellent point. Uh, what magic, what make-believe force or fantastical set of circumstances can any globeheads come up with to lie their way out of this? Venus should be in its own orbit and in its own little world doing its own thing over on the other side of the solar system. This, for me, is the metaphorical straw that broke the camel's back. Moon? Maybe. Not Venus. I'm not buying it. Uh, I'd love to hear Simon, Dan, Morgyle's nemesis, and the other Globies squirm and explain this way. Keep it real, keep it flat, and most important, keep fighting for all of us who can't come out of the closet just yet. Just yet. I am hoping to meet you in person at the Denver conference, and that's Dan at Nola Flats. Boy, I hope I met you. I hope I met you there, Dan. Uh, it was great because I was there for Tuesday and Wednesday, but I left on Thursday. Um, yeah, if, if, what, what he's talking about is the same thing that we run about running the moon, and a lot of people forget which is the moon shows us exactly the same face all the time. And because they say that the moon rotates the exact same degree change as it's rotating around the earth. So, so that we're only seeing the same face. It's like it's locked in and it's, it doesn't even change a half a degree in 10 years or a hundred years. We've always seen the same face of the moon. And, and that's very, very, it's an odd, odd thing. It's one of the, the, the strange coincidences around about the moon. That, that people say, well, science just says, well, it's just, it's just that way. And to say that Venus is doing the same thing is even weirder though, because it is going, the Venus isn't in our orbit. It's in a completely separate orbit. If you believe in mainstream science around the sun. So how's that happening? Has, uh, is that happening? No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm with you there, man. I absolutely am with you. Now, is it going to be the, uh, the, the, the golden arrow in this case? That, that takes down the globe. No, but it helps. It helps because you know, a lot of people, too many people in this country and the world uh, digest fast food media. And I, I won't go into too many examples of that. Mostly it's, it's sports and entertainment and uh, really just those two things, some sort of entertainment factoids. We, we, people do know a lot of stuff. It's not that people are just walking around like drooling idiots. They're not doing that. They're, uh, they just absorb a lot of fast food media, junk food media. And uh, it's just, it takes up most of their brain. So having them try to think about why Venus shouldn't, we're talking about a three-dimensional concept here, three, 3D thinking that they're just not going to get. I get it and you get it. And there's a number of people that will get it. And it, it adds to our, our mounting evidence 
but uh, your average person on the street's not going to get it. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not trying to burst your bubble here in any way, shape, or form. It's. I mean, just think. Even if you told them the moon thing, they would have a hard time with that. And then say, well, you, Venus is even uh, is exponentially harder to explain uh, for, for them. So, but thank you for that. This one's called. Have you heard of the Stat Cam? Mark, I was just wondering if you ever heard of the stat cam. My mother worked for Rockwell International on the space shuttle program in the photo department. She had top secret security clearance. She developed film, but she did not have clearance to develop any of the stat cam images. The stat cam was the graphic designers used before Photoshop and Quark Express to alter images to make magazine or catalog layouts. Here's a video on it. But it's basically what I just told you. Uh, also, are you a Freemason? <laughs> How do you segue into that? Many people say you are because you always do that flat earth sign and that's total Freemason sign. I personally don't think you are because Freemasons believe in the globe. Uh, a piece, Justin. Okay, one, I'm not a Freemason. Uh, have I had family members that are, that are Freemasons? Yeah, lots of them. Uh, my father wasn't though and my uncles weren't, but I think all my grandfathers and, and it, look, it was a big club back in the day and hardly anybody's in it now, uh, mostly because they keep it a secret. The, one of the big things of the Freemasons is they, they try not to recruit. And because if you're not actively, you know, you, you have to come to us. We're not going to come to you. Well, that's fine, except that there's so much media out there now that uh, anyone that was born enough to actually think about joining the Masons are usually just watching movies or playing golf or doing something else. And so the, the Mason uh, membership has just dwindled and dwindled and dwindled till it's almost, it's almost gone now. Um, and as far as the Freemason sign, what that that flat Earth sign that I use? No, 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 no. Look, the free, uh, Freemasons use a lot of, of of different hand insignias, but I don't think they're known for that one. Uh, I mean, they're usually known for the square and compass. So I, you got to use something for the flat Earth. I think the hand sign for the flat Earth is is um, uh, is is pretty appropriate. And and I know David Weiss saying you got to drop it below your neck because the Freemason signs up at neck level. It's like, well, when I'm taking pictures, usually I've got to get my hand in frame. And it's unfortunately close to my head, so there's nothing I can do to um, uh, to avoid that. In some cases, I, I will I will try better, but no, not a Freemason. But thank you for asking a mixed bag of questions there. All right, how many more can I do here before we call this one good? This one, let's, uh, we're still in September. We're going to be in September for a while. Huh. All right, this one's called Stars. Mark, getting a lot of intelligent talk from a few folks on sites. How do how does FE explain opposite rotating star patterns on northern versus southern hemispheres? They say this disproves FE, makes FE impossible, only possible in around Earth advice. Uh, get back to me at uh, Jonathan. And uh, no, I mean, this is, it's an old, old, old question, which is, look, if, if you have a system, if you're in an enclosed system and it's large enough, you are going to... Uh, need multiple display systems or have everything instanced. If you don't know what instancing is, look it up in software. Although if you look it up, the technical description is probably going to make you go blind. Um, it's just something we can do. And uh, it's a realization of an object. And, and I know most people listening to this aren't software developers, but you know what I'm talking about if you deal with simulations at all. If we want to do the, the physical, physical aspect of it, uh, multiple projection systems. That's what it is. Because if you're in a, a, a small room the size of a stadium, you can get away with one. If you're in something that's a thousand miles wide, you're going to have to use several. There you go. That's my easy explanation. If somebody wants to use it, uh, do something else using geometry and spinning stuff around, that's fine. Uh, it's not the one I go with. This one's called 100% Guaranteed Test. Okay. Mark, just figured out 100% Guaranteed Test. Please forward your credit card details for me for approval. <laughs> Got to love the cliffhangers. Rob McKenzie staying ahead of the curve. Oh, I see. That was a joke. That's good. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, people, what he's doing, he's, he's making fun of the, the cliffhangers that, that people send me. Or they say, I've got this wonderful, fantastic thing to tell you. And all you have to do is email me back and I'll tell you. It's like, no, no, just send it to me. Uh, Stealth Balloon Satellites. Mark, I am sure somebody would enjoy this file if it's the unseen. Not sure what amount of distribution is filed received. Enjoy. Okay. I'll take a look at that. Oh, which one are we going to end on? Let's end on something good. Uh, this one's called, put my money where my mouth is. Hey, Mark, just spent a long weekend in Destin, Florida. There's a great Irish bar there called McGuire's where the patrons over the years have left over 1 million single dollar bills 
with a handwritten message on them stapled everywhere. Uh, there are a few open spots throughout the establishment that new bills are showcased for a short period of time before being hung on the ceilings lengthwise like a carpet of deep shag cash. I attached a photo of my bill's message stating research flat earth where, at least for a little while, that message will be front and center at the head of the bar. The bartender also promised to give the clues a look at. Who knows, might be enough to plant a seed or get the ball rolling. Looking forward to meeting you and other flat earthers at FE during uh, the November and November, sorry, November in Denver to remember, uh, keep it flat in New Orleans, Troy. And yes, you know what? Let's end on that one. Uh, it's positive. And again, uh, very happy that I met all the people that I did meet down in Denver. And the billboard event was fantastic. And um, just a fan, everyone, the, it was great to see all the, the speakers there. And you know, sorry that I, I left early. Uh, I did what I did for a reason and didn't expect anyone to follow me. And which is also another reason uh, why... Uh, uh, I, I really didn't say goodbye when I did. I, I wanted everyone to enjoy the conference. So I did my version of Forrest Gump and just went running. That's what I did. Anyway, uh, thanks for everyone that wrote in. Uh, thanks for everybody that's going to write in. I'll, again, I'll keep doing these for as long as I can, as long as I'm able. And uh, you can send those emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M S A R G E N T. 23 at comcast.net and until next time guys keep it flat